What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today we're checking out a game called Archeo Shinar. Have you never seen this game before? Don't worry about it. It's a pretty small indie title where it's an archaeological dig kind of time period simulator where you're like an 1800s, 1700s explorer. Probably 1800s in all honesty. I think it's 1800s. But you're an 1800s explorer, maybe an early 1900s explorer. I don't know why I said 1700s. But you go out, you find treasures, you train people, you have like a team, a squad, you use the money to buy land, become gentry, all that kind of stuff. I figured it might be the kind of guy, it might be the kind of game that you guys wanted to check out. So let's dive straight on in and have a look. So I'll put it on normal. And we've got players, one. Gonna have four players, so I can play against my friends too. Okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. We'll just go new game real fast and we'll see what it has to offer. Create our character. I'm gonna go with that hair right there. That looks nice and... Yeah, I think that seems okay to me. What kind of outfit do I want to wear? I want to... Yeah, something with like a... Yeah, that looks good right there. That works. Our name? Hmm, what will our name be? Abraham Martin. That sounds like a good like early 1900s, late 1800s name. Abraham Martin. Sounds about right. We gotta pick our stamp for when we send out our super awesome letters because we seal everything in wax because we're fancy and dapper. I'm gonna put a moth on mine. That sounds very, very occultish. I like it. Greetings. We are glad that such an accomplished and promising person has appeared on our radar. We've been following your achievements for quite some time. This is why we are sure that we should extend our proposal to you as well. We foresee a great future for you, but it's not a path for those who are fond of procrastinating. It requires hard work and dedication. We strongly believe that you have what it takes to work your way to a position of chairman in our institute. That is right. We are looking for the suitable person to fill in the vacancy in our ranks. However, you are not the only one who have received this letter. Your rivals are already planning their next step on the path that leads to the top of the Royal Archaeology Institute. Make haste if you're willing to be the first. We are going to follow your actions from the distance and observe your results. You have been nominated, but you still need to improve your reputation. This opportunity happens once in a lifetime. May the best archaeologist win. We wish you good fortune. The Royal Archaeology Institute. There you go. Let's do this thing. So there's a couple of things we can do. We can write letters. Uh, we can get strikes up here. That's what we get if we don't pay our workers and we get like a bad reputation. We can listen to music. There's ranking and charts so we can see where everybody else is at in the rankings. We can change the music around if we wanted to. We can write an offensive letter, a threatening letter, or a congratulatory letter. We also have a number of other tabs down here. We have expeditions, which are places where we can go and explore. We have our quarters, which are the place where all of our archaeologists live. So we've got Frederick Hodge. Frederick Hodge appears to be an archaeologist explorer. We've got Heather Lechtman, who appears to be a linguistics person, dabbling also in combat. We have Sylvanus Morley, uh, who is apparently a historian, fighter, explorer. We have Alexander Cunningham, who's a historian, and we have Thomas Jefferson, uh, who is a geologist. I, I sense that he is the best one in the entire group. That's what I, that's, so apparently we need, what is that right there? We can go to the merchant company. These guys like gin, and these two, probably tea is what I bet that is. What, what is that right there? We've got no items over here, unfortunately. We can go to the merchant company, though. What is it? Coffee? Oh, it's coffee. Okay, so we can spend 200 pounds on a crate of coffee for our expedition. I will do justly, and then we will also get some gin, I guess. So there we go. We've got gin, and we've got coffee. What more do you need in life? We've got georadars. We've got interns. We've got monoculars. All right. We can also go to the labor market, and we could hire more people if we really wanted to. You can take a look at their stats. This guy is a fighter. And this guy is a archaeologist explorer. We can also go to the black market where we can sell things that we found on our little adventures. Uh, we can also go to the press. 
and we can convince the press that we're super awesome. And basically what they'll do is we can give them the exclusive rights to our journeys, and they will write memoirs and journeys and tell-alls about the things that we've gone through while we're exploring the world. And that will help us boost up our reputation. Uh, it'll also earn us favors so that we can slander our opponents and remove them from the running if we need to. All that kind of stuff. So inside of our quarters, I don't think we really have much else going on. Over here we need six explorers, and we need people that are good at history, and we need people that are good at linguistics. Okay, what other ones are available? We also have one over here that's for five explorers, and we just need people that are good at archaeology. We have one over here that requires five people, and we need combatants. Let's start off with the archaeology. I'm not trying to get murdered out here. We have 4,000 pounds at the moment, a heavy weight of cash. If we succeed at this, we'll get 7,000 pounds and three reputation. If we fail, we'll get 500 pounds and nothing else. It's good to keep in mind. What else can we buy around here? We've got a geo radar. What does a monocular do? Terrestrial observation is a key factor. It gives us a plus five to exploration. That'll give us a plus seven to geology and that'll give us a plus five to history. Okay. I was hoping that I could get, like, shovels and picks and diggy implements, but unfortunately it looks like we're going to be doing it with our hands because we're just manual like that. Let's begin our expedition. We're going to take all five of our explorers, and then what items do we want to take with us? We'll take the gin, and we will take the coffee. What these do is if somebody has their basic relaxant or stimulant with them, it's on their little character sheet. If they fail at things, they have a chance of developing, like, quirks and problems. Just like when you're playing Darkest Dungeon or when you're playing XCOM, they'll develop negatives to their stats. If you have one of these stimulants or one of the random vices that they like available, they can dodge that roll, essentially, whenever they fail. And so, or at least lower their chances of getting it. So we're off on expedition right now. Do ba dip dip do dip ba dip dip moving around the world like Indiana Jones. Uh, we need somebody that's good at archaeology. 33, who's my best archaeologist? He is. All right, so he's going to have to be my archaeologist. An unforgettable failure, but he learned plus one archaeology from his failure. So we didn't get anything from it, but we did get a plus one to his main stat, so not too bad. Uh, he's out of the running now. We're going to take Thomas Jefferson and put him on that one. He succeeded at archaeology on that stop. Unfortunately, there's no flavor text or anything else like that to tell us what happened. We need another archaeologist over here. I guess you can try. I wasn't expecting this many archaeology tests on an archaeological dig, but I guess, hey, you know, who would have known that archaeology would be tested on an archaeology trip? An unforgettable failure. What a plus one archaeology, right? I get the feeling that this is not going to be a successful venture. That's the feeling that I get. Uh, linguistics. He is not very good at linguistics. I already burned my linguistics person, so you can only use each person one time per trip. And so it was an expedition failure, but nobody developed any fears. We got 500 bucks, so, you know, you got to start somewhere. 500 pounds, that's still a decent amount of money. I can live with that. All right, so we failed horribly. Back to town we go. Uh, lately, people associated with the world of archaeology talk a lot about the conflict between the government of Ecuador and a missionary named Crespi. This individual buys forgotten artifacts paying really laughably small prices. According to the government, such action is stealing. They say he dispossesses the country of their cultural inheritance, since they didn't allow anyone to excavate there. On the other hand, Crespi doesn't dig any items from the ground, but buys what he can find from dusty attics or basements in the local community. It's not his fault that rightful citizens search the jungle in order to discover a valuable artifact. Ordinary folk speak very highly about the missionary who saves whole families from poverty by offering them money. But the question remains, is he a good Samaritan or nothing but a smuggler who wears a cassock? Everyone involved in science is talking about this, so the Royal Archaeological Gazette forces you to make a statement. We can side with the government, or we can side with Crespi. I mean, it's the early 1900s, so I'm going to assume that most people are not going to they are not gonna side with foreign governments during this time period. This was basically a time period where everybody thought it was perfectly and totally okay to just loot the coffers of everywhere they possibly could. Egypt... Africa, wherever they could find artifacts, they were digging them up everywhere. It was a part of the time. So let's go with Crespi. Our expedition reward was $500. Hopefully that'll offset the cost of some of the salary that we had to pay. And then Sir George Charles of Lennox has, or Sir George Charles Lennox has brought, or has bought Crystal River for a thousand pounds. What expeditions are available? History and geology. Okay. 
We have geology and survival. And we have archaeology. Let's go to the labor market and see if we can find another archaeologist. We have one right there. Let's hire him. So we have another archaeologist available. As far as our crew quarters goes, with Pataki, he likes... Okay, so we just need to go to the merchant company and we need to buy coffee and we need to buy gin to make sure that people don't pick up any nasty fears along the way. Uh, we don't have anything at the black market. Merchant company, we have a history textbook, which gives us a plus three. A geology right there, and we've got a tent for survival. Don't think that's going to be that helpful. Let's go back to our expeditions, and if we can go back on another archaeological dig, we just need like one success in the archaeological arena to finance everything else. So he's an archaeologist. She's kind of archaeology -y. Those two, and I guess he's the lesser of evils here. Who was my linguist? She was. All right, so I need to save her in case we get a linguistics test. Uh, that looks good to me. I don't think that we need anybody else, so let's go on expedition. Uh, we'll take the gin, and we'll take the coffee with us, and hopefully we'll avoid developing any eldritch fears along the way. Keeping all of those pesky octopus monsters away from us. Uh, we have a double archaeology test right here. With you and you. Failure. Damn it! Do I even have, like, a chance of succeeding? Because I've succeeded at nothing so far. Like, not a single thing have I succeeded at. Archaeology, I guess we'll send him in. Maybe all of my people are just piss-poor archaeologists. I don't know, but it seems like maybe the test is a little too hard for these early quests. We've succeeded at nothing so far. It's a little it's a little bit of a downer. Oh my god, we did ruthless success. We found a Greek bronze helmet. Never mind, it's perfectly tuned. Uh, that's only worth 100 pounds, though, on the black market. I find myself disappointed. So the expedition was a failure. We made 1,300 bucks, though. I mean, it could be worse. At least we made enough to pay salary this time around. But yeah, we're not doing great right now. We need to do better. So we got 1,300 right there from the helmet and everything else. We got to pay salary. We've also got somebody else bought some property, okay? If we wanted to buy property, we could do that from right here. Uh, Pyramid Mountain has a lot of fertility. We can bid however mount we want to put on it, but frankly, we're kind of broke right now. So unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be an option. Now, we have a helmet right here. We can sell it, or we can hold on to it. Really kind of depends. It's not worth that much money, so like, frankly, I don't really think that it's worth it. And we've got combat over here. We've got combat geology. That's a pretty frequent. We've got linguistics on this side. I don't think I really have anything that I want to do right there. Let's go talk to the press. So we've got the Royal Gazette. We have one favor right here. Royal Archaeology favors a prestigious insight into the academic achievements from all around the world. Our editors and journalists research the newest information to keep you, our readers, up to date with what's going on in the community of archaeologists. We work hard in order to maintain a level of professional standards which we have established from the beginning. That's why we are not interested in private matters. Our motto is archaeology is a majestic job, so let's save brave explorers from falling into it. That's a long motto. That's a motto that could use a little bit of the old clippings. Like, they gotta trim that down slightly. Like, archaeology is baller. You know what I mean? Like, you gotta get it down to a catchphrase. You know, they do biologies, or biographies, historical events, news, and funny anecdotes. Alright. We also have the Imperial Economic Bulletin, which deals with the financial side of archaeological work. We also have the Age of Decadency, which is a stylish designer about clothing. Okay, so they're more focused on, like, the fluff pieces and whatnot. Oh, cool. They liked my expedition. Nice. So we sold them the rights to the story to tell what we did on our last expedition to find that helmet, basically. You know, the combat capability and geology worries me. So we've got 20, she's decent at combat, he's decent at combat, he's alright at combat. But we really only have, like, one geologist. We'd actually be better off just going for some used space. We'd actually be better off with something that's just combat, in all honesty. A linguistics trip is probably not going to happen. Alright, let's go with combat. We need six people. 
We'll bring them along. This time I can't afford to buy any of the anti-fear stuff. So unfortunately, we're probably gonna be pretty fearful on this one. Uh, we may develop some severe phobias of like gunfire and the horses and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we'll put him in on that one. With a 40, he was successful in combat. Kurahi, say I. Kurahi. Uh, we have another combat capability over here. Go for it. Kurahi again. Apparently, we're really good at kicking ass and taking names. We're not so good at the scientific stuff, but if it comes down to it, beating faces or whatever, pretty solid at it. We're pretty good at it. Continue onwards. You have my permission. Uh, double combat over here. So who are my two best combatants that are left? We succeeded again! Huzzah! I will sell our jolly good adventures to the newspapers. They will know that we went out and we fought bravely with much heart. Expedition was a success. Uh, we developed some fears though. So he has decetophobia and rhabdophobia. Okay, I thought that you only develop phobias if you failed. But I guess PTSD knows no boundaries. Uh, we got a pay salary here. All right. Uh, 4,300 pounds, though, which basically got us back into the game. A few days after the last expedition, he met Thomas Jefferson in the bar car. He was going to visit his nephew or some member of his kin. And you, you were there because your life is full of unexpected journeys. One thing led to another, and he told you a story about Heather Lichtman. It seems like she'd found a Tang Dynasty figure and told everybody that it's an irrelevant object. The rest of the explorers didn't say anything, but Thomas Jefferson spared a few seconds to get a better look, and in his opinion, it was something more valuable than irrelevant. Maybe Heather Lechman has a particular taste in beauty. It seems like she's stealing from you, or maybe Thomas Jefferson's wrong. However, there's no proof for now. Radical measures are not recommended. Okay, well, I mean, I could search her room or I could do nothing, but I'm gonna go with do nothing until we have more proof. Madame Vanessa de Outremencourt bought Pyramid Mountain for 885 pound. I guess we could take the frozen forest. I'll bid 800 pound on it. Like, so we can own something, you know what I mean? Like, we might as well. We're trying to become landed gentry here, and so in order to do that, we need land. We got a little bit of cash left. These people picked up some phobias. Who was it that got decetophobia? So, decetophobia. So, he got worse at linguistics and fighting. That's not good because he was one of my fighters. And then he picked up. Rhabdophobia. Well, apparently we should always bring stimulants. That's what I just learned. I thought from the tutorial that you only got fears if you failed those tests. But apparently when you succeed, you get fears too. And so it may be worth it for us to go in and grab the things we need from the store. Let's go to the press. And with the age of decadency, I'm going to give exclusive license. Our expedition was boring. Oh, I didn't think it was boring. Lame. It was a combat expedition. Who doesn't want to know about that? We had jolly good fights. A good scrum, lads. Lame. Combat capability and survival, but we need seven we need seven explorers for that one. On the labor market, we have that guy who's a survivalist, Theodore Debuy. We also have Zelia Nuttall, who is really good at exploration but not really that great at anything else. If we were gonna hire somebody, I'd probably go with him, just because at least he excels at one thing. At least. Now we have a linguistics trip right there. We have a exploration trip right there. And we have a combat survival mission. You know, I think we should probably do the combat survival. I have my doubts that it's going to turn out okay, but tempering character, I suppose. Oh, it requires seven explorers. We don't have seven explorers, so we're going to have to do something else. We get no recompense if we fail that. Lame, dude. I wish there... Is there a way to, like, bypass a day? Because none of these are inside my skill sets. Let's go... 
Apparently, I can write a letter. Salutations. Congratulations on your recent acquisition of new lands. Jolly good pip pip cheerio tea time. Warm regards. A. There you go. Apparently, I got to write out a letter. Our reputation is up. Our expenses are also absurdly expensive. Feels bad. Feels bad. E survival, huh? Alright, I guess I'll do it since I can't appear to figure out how to bypass a day. Oh no! Oh, apparently the game doesn't save right now? Oh, I can continue. Okay, good. It does save. Never mind. I got a little panicky. I got a little panicky. I got a little worried. That was not the best of me. Sure, let's go with exploration. Who are my best explorers? He explores. He explores. Oh, this is before I got this guy, too. He's survival? Hmm. She explores. Let's hire her. Explorer. 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 And then we'll take the best we can from the rest of them. So he's 27. She's 25. We'll do that. And then she's 25, so we'll do that right there. I don't think I put items in. Unless it automatically brings them. But I don't think I put in items. We're going to get more fears. As far as exploration goes, yeah, why not? Do your thing, man. Yay, we were successful in exploring and finding new things. Continue onwards. You will be a suitable candidate. We need to succeed at these expeditions. I need it. Like, I need the cash. Uh, who's my best explorer? Go with her. Apparently, we're being super successful right now. I think I just took missions that were too hard for me. Like, I think you gotta look at the price of the mission and, like, do the best you can with what you have. And so, like, I think the price actually directly correlates with how hard the mission is before you send people out and how high their skills need to be in order to make the checks. We found Riton? Oh, cool, we found, like, a golden bull's head. I didn't know what a Riton was, but hey... We're riding it now. Da da da. Yeah, I don't think they should get phobias unless you fail. That seems kind of like unfair to me. Like I get it. I guess like I part of me. I guess I can see both sides of it. But it seems weird that you get punished for succeeding. You know what I mean? With like a permanent debuff that you cannot get rid of. That's all. After you, with a group of other famous archaeologists, side with Father Crespi, decides to publish his theory that the tribes living in South America are descendants from inhabitants of the ancient Egypt and Babylonia. What's more, he's changed his house into a museum where he displays the collection of artifacts. The situation has shifted drastically, and it isn't so important if the hypothesis is true or false. The missionary stepped into a stormy world of academic discussions like a revolutionist. Of course, the moment this museum opened its doors, the conflict with the government erupted again. There isn't any more time for silent support. If you don't stop to back him up, there will be public consequences. But how to get out of this? Accuse Father Crespi of madness or admire his humanitarian work or discredit the theory? The newspaper awaits for your answer. I admire him as a human, but despite him as an expert. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds like a reasonably safe middle ground to take. Didn't I bid 800 on that? How did he buy it for 600 if I bid at 800? Hmm. Alright, we need to get some property out here. I'll drop a thousand pounds on the next one. It's selling at 500, but I'm overshooting it by a bit so that I can win. Labor market. We've got a survivalist geologist over here. Every geologist is technically a survivalist. Spent a lot of time in the field. You'd be hard pressed to find a geologist that doesn't know how to start a fire. Uh, archaeologist over here too. Let's see what our expeditions are for right now before I do anything else. Geology and survival. Okay. We've got history on that side. And we've got archaeology on that side. And that's an easy archaeology expedition. That only requires five. Okay, let's go... Yeah, I think what happened is when I canceled, when I went to the little menu up there, it canceled my purchases. 
And then it also canceled my bid on the land, I think is what happened. Uh, yeah, let's do archaeology. Sure, why not? We need five people, and, like, everybody here is decent at archaeology, I think. Or at least somewhat. Let's go to the labor market real fast. We will get... He was an archaeologist, wasn't he? We'll hire him. Alright, let's begin. So, archaeologist, kind of archaeologist, sort of archaeologist, archaeologist, specialized archaeologist. Good. And then items we shall bring with us. There we go. So I guess the items menu only shows up if you actively have items, but that's okay. I just don't want people getting any more fears. I can't deal with that right now. Any more fears and we're going to fall apart. Let's go with a, an average archaeologist for him. Hopefully we get some ruthless successes in here. We start finding some artifacts. Because if we don't, we're going to struggle. I forgot to sell my story. Should have done that. Put him in there. I don't see why we shouldn't. Oh, look, we found ancient toilet paper right there. Nice. Now we can wipe our booty holes in ancient style. I'll put him in. Yeah, I was going to say, he might fail because his archaeology is not necessarily the best, but it's okay. We still got a couple of decent archaeologists left. There we go. Perfect. I wonder if I can fire some of these guys, too, and pick up better people. Yay! Victorious am I! Should have been a successful expedition. 2400 bucks. Somebody still got a fear. He got hauntophobia. We're going to have to fire him, unfortunately. He's picked up too many phobias. That was even with us bringing stimulus, so I guess it just lowers the chance. It's 5 o'clock. You're in your office and something unimaginary happened. You have a free evening tonight. This is new. What should you do in your free time? Uh, let's go to Madame Barlow's ball. All right, two grand right there. Uh, we will pay the salary. Sorry, your attempt to buy the land ended in failure, but you got your money back. Oh, he outbid us, really. So I wonder if they're not bidding against each other, but they are bidding against me. Lame. My name is Splattercat. This game's called Archeo Shinar. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you all later. Thank you very much for stopping on in. If you wanted to get the game for yourself, it's at early access down below. Take care and hi-do, everybody.